Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Scott Wheeler. I'm a support engineer here at CircleCI. Today, we'll be talking about some of the advanced features available on our platform. I'm joined by Jonathan Cavazos, who is also a support engineer at CircleCI, who will be hanging out in the chat to answer any questions you all have during the presentation. There will also be ample time at the end for Q&A, where I'll be answering any questions you may have. If we don't get to answer your question today, we'll send a follow-up email to the email address used to register for this webinar. Additionally, we'll be sending out this webinar recording after, so don't worry about having to copy the content as I move through the slide deck. All right, let's jump in. Oh, it is not participating with me today. All right, today's agenda includes how to find answers and ask for help. We'll go over executors, their use cases, and some examples how to create and manage workflows and why they're valuable, the different methods of managing secrets inside your builds, how to create reports and persist data after the build completes using test results and artifacts. We'll talk about some optimization techniques, the CircleCI API, followed by a Q&A session at the end. How to find answers and ask for help. The CircleCI docs are a great place to explore different concepts on CircleCI. You can find almost any information related to building on CircleCI that you would need here. If something isn't clear or missing, please reach out to the support team and let us know. We'll be happy to clarify that for you. The support center contains CircleCI's knowledge base. It's a great place to dive into for common errors and other information. In most cases, the knowledge base can be used to quickly solve most problems that you'd run into while using CircleCI. To reach the CircleCI support team, you can create a ticket directly from your CircleCI dashboard by clicking on support and then get support. Other ways you can reach us include by email, support at circleci.com, or the Knowledge Center by clicking open a support ticket under the section titled, can't find your answer. Our community supports available at discuss.circleci.com. Discuss is a great place to reach out to the community and find users who are doing something similar to what you're trying to accomplish. If you're interested in a specific third party tool, library, or dependency, Discuss is an awesome resource to reach out to others and see how they're using it to build on CircleCI. Moving on to executors, CircleCI offers a ton of convenience images for the Docker executor. The convenience images are language specific. Some examples are Ruby, Node, PHP, and Android. We also offer several resource class options for the Docker Executor. The five here on the slide cover the majority of use cases. If your build requires more resources than the extra large resource class, which provides 16 gigabytes of memory and eight CPU cores, please reach out to support. We'll be happy to help you get the resources needed to build your application. A configuration example is available on the right side of the slide here. This example will print Docker into the build output window using the CircleCI node image. A couple of notes on Docker images. Each resource class will cost a different amount of credits. The larger the resource, the more credits they will consume per minute. Service images such as Postgres or Redis are not available at localhost. You must use 127.0.0.1 followed by the port. Service images will use the same resources as the primary container. If the primary container is allocated four gigabytes of memory and you're running a Redis cache, and a Postgres database, they share the same four gigabytes of memory as the primary container. In other words, it may be necessary to raise the resource class if you're building with more memory intensive services running alongside your build. The Windows Executor is a VM based, or sorry, the Windows Executor is VM based and isolated to your build session. It uses the server core version of Windows Server 2019 Data Center Edition. Currently, there's only one resource class available for Windows, but we're working to expand that in the future. Currently, you can access a virtual machine with 15 gigabytes of memory and four CPU cores. There are a few different shell options in the Windows Executor. You can use PowerShell by default or specify bash or command prompt depending on your use case. Docker is also available in the Windows Executor if you need to run any Windows-based Docker images. The configuration on the right side will spin up a Windows machine and use PowerShell to write Windows in the build output window. More information on the Windows Executor is available at circle.ci forward slash hello windows. 
The machine executor is an Ubuntu-based VM which provides application isolation as well as access to privileged Docker commands. There are two resource classes available to use, which are medium and large. The default medium resource class will provide access to seven and a half gigabytes of memory and two CPU cores. The large resource class will provide 15 gigabytes of memory and four CPU cores. The configuration example on the right side will spin up an Ubuntu VM and Echo machine into the build output window. One caveat I'd like to note about machine is the spin up time. In the Docker executor, we typically see a spin up time around a few seconds. The machine executor can take anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds to spin up before your build will start running. The Mac OS executor is available for users who need to perform testing on iOS and Mac OS applications. The Mac OS executor provides access to iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and Apple TV simulators. We have two resource classes available for Mac OS, medium and large. The default medium resource class will provide access to eight gigabytes of memory and four CPU cores. The large resource class will provide 16 gigabytes of memory and eight CPU cores. The large resource class is restricted and will require review by our support team before you can begin using it. The configuration example on the right will spin up a Mac OS executor using the Xcode 11.0.0 environment and print Mac OS in the build output window. More information on Mac OS is available at circle.ci forward slash hello Mac. Some best practices when building using Docker on Circle CI. It's best to use the most specific version of a Docker image possible. Our convenience images are built automatically as the upstream images are released, which means it's the release version of the image cached locally in some Circle CI preferred tools, such as the Circle CI CLI. SSH and Git injected into the image. If you run into any kind of race condition where the database hasn't fully spun up and the application begins running, it's good to use Dockerize to wait for the database to be available before continuing. The example on this slide will time out and fail after 120 seconds if the database has failed to start in that amount of time. We support most container registries. Some examples are AWS Elastic Container Registry, Docker Hub, and Quay.io. On screen, there's some examples on how to configure your build to use a Docker image using AWS and Quay.io with authentication. Moving on to workflows. Some definitions when talking about workflows. A workflow is a set of rules defining how jobs such as build, test, and deploy are run, giving teams granular control over their software development process. A job is a collection of steps and an execution environment to run them in. A step is an executable command. A build is an obsolete way to mean jobs and workflows altogether. Fan out, fan in enables you to run multiple jobs in parallel for efficient ver version testing and fan in to quickly deploy to multiple platforms. There are different types of workflows, scheduling and cron. Scheduling allows you to define a schedule for jobs that should only run periodically. This could include uh, nightly builds or maybe uh, weekly production deployments. An approval job provides control over steps that may need manual approval to continue, such as deploying to production. Branch specific allows you to specify which branches a build should run with. Tag specific allows you to specify which tags a workflow should run with. Why workflows? Workflows allow you to decompose your build settings and write a story using end-to-end -end tests. It allows you to run and troubleshoot jobs independent of each other and receive real-time status feedback. It's possible to schedule workflows for jobs that should only run periodically, such as nightly builds or weekly releases. And again, workflows allows you to fan out to run multiple jobs in parallel and then fan back in to deploy to your platform choice. Moving on to secrets management. There are a couple places to define environment variables to store your secrets. Secrets can be injected using the config.yml and using the environment key identifier. This can be provided at the step, job, or container level, depending on your use case. Environment variables can also be injected from the project settings, which provides a project level secret store for the environment variables that your application would need to run.
Contexts allow you to create a global create global environment variables which are accessible to any project in the organization. When using GitHub, Context also allows you to create an access control list to ensure only the necessary contributors have access to the secrets. Some gotchas when using environment variables. Circle CI doesn't support environment variable interpolation. Modifying the path variable directly will result in the default environment variables being overwritten. The solution to that is to export the variables using bash environment. Problem, environment variables are overwritten. Uh, solution, check the president's order to ensure that environment variables aren't being overwritten in the project settings or on the config.yml. Moving into test results. Test results can be useful to determine which tests commonly fail, how long it normally takes for a test to run, and other information. Test results need to be stored in a folder. In the example, we're storing the test results in the root directory forward slash rspec folder. The test results also exist in this directory, and when using store test results, you shouldn't target the file specifically. After storing test results, information such as most commonly failed tests, slowest test, job success rate, and other information will be available in the Insights dashboard. Build optimizations. Different caching strategies we have to optimize your builds, builds are dependency caching, workspaces, artifacts, and Docker layer caching. Dependency caching is used to cache application dependencies between job runs, such as node modules. Workspaces are used for data producing a job that needs to be available to subsequent jobs, uh, such as if you have two Docker containers, one runs downstream from the other, and you need to pass um, an application between those, uh, workspaces will enable you to do that. Artifacts is for persisting data that's available after the entire workflow is completed, such as your finished application. Um, it'll be available in the artifacts tab. Docker layer caching is used when building do custom Docker images on Circle CI. We can cache the layers uh, similar to how Docker layer caching works normally. Dependency caching, again, persist data between the same job and multiple workflows. This is the most common caching strategy, uh, typically used for um, like node modules to uh, persist those between jobs so they don't have to be re-downloaded each time. An example of that, in this instance, we're using Ruby. We have the Rails demo bundle v2 and a checksum on gemfile.lock. We run our bundle install, and then we save the cache again. So if there are any new dependencies that came along with bundle install or any updates, we will have that cache saved again against the gemfile.lock. The cache key is a unique identifier. Some common templates are branch build number, environment.variable name, and checksum file name. A rule of thumb when dependency caching is start from being specific, becoming less specific. You can define multiple, uh, multiple cache keys depending on how you want your file to build. The less specific you get increases the chance that you get an old version of dependencies, which could cause your application to fail. There's no way to clear an existing cache. A good workaround is to implement a version key in the cache identifier. In this example, we use v1. If this cache becomes stale, we can increment the cache to v2 to force the build to use a new cache. Workspaces move data in between sequential jobs in a workflow. In this example, we are echoing hello world to a file and persisting it in the echo output path. And then in the downstream job, we attach the workspace and now we have access to that echo output file. Artifacts persist data after a workflow is completed and gone. Again, this is useful if you build an application and need to access that binary after the build is completed. 
An example of how we would accomplish that is by creating a dummy artifact here. We echo my artifact files in a directory. Um, and then we store that as an artifact and that'll later become available in the build output window. Docker layer caching caches the individual layers of any Docker images built during your CircleCI jobs and then reuses unchanged image layers on subsequent CircleCI runs rather than rebuilding the entire image every time. In short, the less Docker files change from commit to commit, the faster your image building steps will run. Uh, DLC can be used with setup remote Docker can be used when building Docker images on the machine executor, and it's only used when you're building images on CircleCI. Talk about speeding up your builds using parallelism. To speed up builds using parallelism, we need to define the parallelism key with the number of containers you want to run. You want this job to run concurrently. In this example, we're using four parallel containers. You can split tests using the CircleCI CLI. In this example, we glob tests together using the CircleCI test glob in the path to in the path to test definitions, then piping that to CircleCI test split to create a test file, which can then be used by CircleCI to automatically distribute the tests to parallel containers. Moving into debugging failed builds. For more intense troubleshooting, it's possible to use SS it's possible to SSH into the container while your build is running. This will allow you to analyze the build in real time, debug logs, or manually trigger the build. You can rerun a job with SSH by dropping down the rerun workflow button in the top right of the build output window and selecting rerun job with SSH. Common errors and mistakes. Exit code 137 indicates an out of memory error. If you're building a Java application, a way to circumvent this is by using Java options. A second solution would be to raise your build to a higher resource class to provide more resources when the applications are building, testing, or deploying. Problem filter tag and workflow, but every commit is running a build. Uh, CircleCI will always try to build by branch first. If you don't want your build to run on each branch commit, but each time you release a tag, you need to define which branches to ignore. In this example, we're ignoring all branches, but only allowing uh, builds that's, that are tagged with CI test to continue running. Problem push a commit, but no build happened on circle CI. This can happen sometimes if there is a error in the YAML syntax of this config.yml. The easiest way to check this is using the circle CI CLI commands, circle CI config validate. Problem cat command not found. This is generally with any OS related command, command not found. If you're attempting to use a command which is, not, which is usually available in the image but are receiving command not found, check to see that you're not modifying the path variable to path environment variable directly. Moving on to deployments. A circle CI continuous integration is used to test and merge changes into the main branch as often as possible. Continuous delivery is used to deploy those changes to your users to, your, to, to deploy those changes to your users and customers can utilize those changes as fast as possible. We support many deployment platforms um, a lot of those are available as the reusable config modules known as orbs. And we also offer the deployment step or the deploy step. Approval is something that goes hand in hand with continuous delivery. In some cases, you might have processes that require approval for a deployment. We can use the approval step to prevent unwanted deployments. It's possible to restrict who can approve a job using secure context. In the above example, we define a context in the require context job. When this context is scoped to specific users or groups, the job will fail if the approver doesn't exist in that group. Moving on to Circle CI APIs. Common use cases of APIs are uh, triggering a build on demand. Uh, retrieving artifacts, getting project and build information, and integrating with other tools. T 
To use the API, you need an API token. You can get that at circleci.com forward slash account forward slash API if you are logged in. A quick note on the different types of API tokens. A personal API token can be used for any write operations, such as triggering a build. A project token only has read access and can be used things for things like status badges. All right, we've reached the Q&A portion of the presentation. I see there's questions in the chat. I will read through and start to address. Please feel free to ask any questions you have in there. Question, is it possible to set up multiple Slack integrations per repository so that we can push messages to multiple channels? It's not available with the default Slack integration. This is something you can do with the Slack orb. Um, with the Slack orb, you configure it in the config.yml rather than the CircleCI dashboard, and it gives you more power to control what messages you send and where you send them to. Attached workspace persists to workspace seems to have fluctuate, fluctuant latencies between a few seconds to a minute. What can be used to lower these times or what might affect them? So some things that can affect uh, the latency on uh, attached workspace is file size. Um, attached workspace is a network call that moves between builds. So if the workspace is very large, it can cause, it can take a while for the data to be per persisted to the next job. Um, if that's not the case, please reach out to support. We'd be happy to investigate. How to persist data, such as node modules, between pipelines. Um, persisting node modules can be done with dependency caching. Um, I will pop back to the slide real quick. Um, so in this case, we use the checksum on POM XML. Or sorry, let me jump back to this one. Um, we use the checksum on gemfile.lock. This would be the same thing, except you would use uh, package.lock. And under a pass, you would uh, put the path to the node modules folder. Um, and then as restore cache and save cache runs, it'll be available to subsequent jobs after the cache has been saved at least once. I seem to recall that CircleCI uses AWS. Can we specify if a job or workflow can run on a specific AWS geo location? Uh, that is correct. Circle CI runs in AWS US East. Um, however, it's not possible to specify which geolocation Circle CI will run from, or your build will run from. Can I schedule a different job depending on previous job results in the workflow? This can be accomplished using the API and a little bit of bash ingenuity. Um, you can use bash to determine the output state of the previous build and then to trigger another build um, on a different project or the same project or persist data to that project using artifacts as you need. Um, my company uses Circle CI. I've had trouble running the Gecko driver for Java, Selenium, and Cucumber automation with Firefox. I got to work for Chrome with Chrome driver, but even after I've downloaded the Gecko driver and pointed my project to run to it, I get unable to find a matching set of capabilities as the error. Um, Selenium and Java can become a complex situation. In this case, I'd ask you to reach out to support. Um, sometimes it could be due to um, how paths work, if it's being persisted between different types of executors, um, how much memory is available in the container. Java and Selenium can take a lot of memory sometimes, um, but please reach out to support. We'd be happy to help you. If tests are run in parallel, is it possible to collect coverage data from all our runs? Yes, using workspaces, you can open a workspace in the parallel container, um, store your coverage data, 
and then persist that to your fan in job and it'll allow you to um, access that all at once and then you can export it as a compressed file. Sorry, I was just looking for the fan out, fan in. Here, so in this case, um, all your parallel tests would collect your coverage data and then using workspaces you would predict, it, uh, sorry, uh, you would uh, let it move forward into the uh, final build as you fan in and from there you can persist the data as an artifact or however you'd like to handle it. Is there any way to guarantee the order of deployments to prevent multiple deployments from shipping out of order? If you're deploying from the same job, it would be, uh, the best way to handle this would be using the requires tag. I know I have an example, one second. So the requires tag allows you to say, uh, don't let this step continue forward until the previous step has stopped. Um, um, right here, so in the requires context job, we say um, before this job can run, we want request testing to run, um, which is an approval job, but this also works for um, deployment so you can make sure that it runs in sequence. Will Circle CI support mono repo, one repository, multiple applications and build processes develop? Um, that's something that has been added to our roadmap if you go to ideas.circleci.com, um, you'll be able to find the mono repo uh, feature request, which has a ton of support. Our engineers have interacted with it quite a bit and uh, added it to our roadmap. It's something we're working on. Uh, we're currently using workflows to run test cases simultaneously by directory. Each job currently reports to Codacy, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm not familiar with it. Separately when completed, is there a way to combine the metrics for each job after they are all completed so that the metrics are reported to Codacy only once? Um, again, using workspaces, you can, uh, using workspaces, you can persist that data um, in all the parallel containers to a single fan in job at the end. Um, and then in the fan end job, you can upload all that data to uh, Codacy once. When using remote Docker, is it possible to pass any SSH permission keys to the remote Docker environment? Um, yes, it is. Off the top of my head, I can't give you an example. If you search our knowledge base, um, that article is in there and you'll be able to um, pass your SSH permissions to the remote Docker environment. Is it possible to manually rerun a single job from the workflow without having to use the rerun job with SSH option without having to rerun the whole workflow? Um, currently, there's not a way to do that. You would need to either rerun the job with SSH or rerun the entire workflow. Um, however, there is also another option there to rerun from failed. So if uh, you're only debugging a failed container, you can rerun from that point and it won't redo the entire workflow or at least the steps that have already passed. Is there any future plan to further restrict job workflow approval? Um, I am not sure that I completely understand that question. Um, right now, if you are a GitHub user, you can restrict using groups and teams. Um, and yeah, so if you're, 
Okay, if you're on GitHub and you want to restrict an approval, um, you can use a downstream context. So what happens when someone clicks approve? If they don't have access to that downstream context, the build's going to fail and not, not allow the deployment to happen. Is there a way to make sure workflows triggered by the API runs those workflows sequentially? Um, the workflows will be ran in the order that they are um, told to, either via commit or API. And that goes further to um, if there are enough, um, let's say you're on the performance plan, you have up to 200 containers running concurrently and your workflow will only use two containers. If there are available containers, then the workflows will just start running rather than sequentially. It's not possible to restrict that further. Um, if you contact support, we have some workarounds we could do, but that mostly just restricts the amount of containers that you can use at one time. How do orbs tie into all this? Um, orbs are a fantastic product that creates reusable config, kind of like libraries that you would use in your everyday code. Um, orbs are most commonly used in deployment steps where you would want to deploy to Heroku, for example. Um, in the instance of an orb, the only thing you have to provide to it is the authentication and where you want to deploy to in Heroku. Um, we have tons of orbs for deployment, um, AWS, GCP, Heroku, Azure, Almost any service you can think of, we have an orb for it to be able to deploy. Is there a way to share custom commands for CircleCI jobs between multiple private repositories? Um, that would be, I wanna say it's possible, but it would take some tricky workarounds um, using artifacts and workspaces and potentially contexts. Um, reach out to support. I'd be happy to help you find a solution on that one. How does one apply for their org to become marked as certified or partner? Um, right now, we don't mark orbs as certified, but we will mark them as partner. If you reach out to support at circleci.com, we would put you in contact with uh, the team responsible for uh, creating partnerships with orbs. In terms of orbs, I have a CLI tool that needs to target both Windows and Mac OS. Could I use orbs to build both versions in one build with multiple jobs? Um, yes, if I'm understanding the question correctly. Um, so what you would do is you would have the uh, job definition um, where you can define the executor and then you can provide that executor as you're calling on the orb, um, whether it be to Windows, Mac, Docker, Ubuntu, however you want to do that. Um, our getting started guide on orbs is a great place to look for that. There are a way to set up CircleCI projects automatically. I think by default, the repo owner is the only person allowed to set up a project. Um, any person who is an administrator on a project or in a repository is, uh, will be able to set up the project on CircleCI. Um, the reason it requires admin is because we set up a deployment key and a webhook, and only administrators can do that on your respective VCS provider. In the Docker layer caching documentation, it mentions the DLCs available at 200 credits per job run. What is that referring to? Um, so that means each time you run Docker layer caching in your build, rather than um, being charged per minute with DLC, you would be charged of a one-time 200 credits to use Docker layer caching. Our code checkout step takes 40 seconds. Is there any way to speed that up? Also, when we fan out to run multiple jobs in parallel, the fanned out jobs also have to check out the code. Should we be sharing workspace data between the jobs? Um, I will answer the second question first. Yes, it is possible to uh, share uh, the Git checkout using workspaces to the downstream jobs. Um, the code checkout step taking 40 seconds 
if you reach out to support, we'd be happy to help with that. Um, it really comes down to how big your repository is. Um, sometimes larger repositories, it just takes a little while to come across. Um, but definitely reach out to support, we'd be happy to look into that. What's the status of top level orb parameters? It's monotonous to keep passing around configs between different layers of jobs and commands in a deconstructed orb. Um, it's still possible to use YAML anchors as top level orb parameters. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend using YAML anchors in this instance, which I have an example of. Um, so in this case, uh, defaults, sorry, the definition's not in there. Um, defaults is a YAML anchor that refers to a definition which says um, basically the execution environment. Um, so in this case, probably using Docker. Um, so, so we'd use circle CI forward slash um, node um, as the image, and that would exist in defaults. So in this case, we're using defaults for each of the jobs. That way we only had to define our execution environment once, even though um, we're using it in diff several different jobs. Echoing a question asked in chat, is there a way to prevent access to secret environment variables which can generally be accessed by SSH? Um, jobs run with SSH are able to be ran by anyone with right access. Um, if there is a secure context, they won't be able to access that, that portion. The job would actually fail. So if a secure context is scoped to um, person A and person B tries to rerun the job with SSH, the job will fail because they don't have access to the context. Um, so in the case that you want to use secret environment variables, I would highly and restrict that to um, a certain group of people, I would ask you to use secure contexts. Is it possible to invalidate a cache without changing the cache key? It's not possible to uh, break a cache without changing the cache key. Um, that's why we generally recommend using a version key. That way you can increment it as you uh, deem necessary. Will CircleCI offer webhooks to provide workflow status changes and job results? Um, this is something I would ask for you to put on the ideas board as a feature request. Um, right now, I don't know of any plans to do so. Um, and again, that, that feature request board is ideas.circleci.com. We often see decreased network download speed in GMT evening time. It affects both external connection, i.e. GitHub, but also downloading of the internal cache. Are there any plans to fix this? Um, so this can happen due to, um, it's just like a peak period where folks are using Circle CI. Um, however, we're constantly working on improving our infrastructure to make things faster. Um, so that's something that is an ongoing effort to, to speed up everyone's network connections. Is there a way to trigger a workflow to run only if the commit was made by a specific user? Um, no, any person who has right access to the repository will be able to trigger a build on CircleCI. Is there a way to view insights with the new UI and can you view insights for the entire project or just a branch? Um, I believe that is planned in the new UI. 
Um, and we're working on getting that to be available in the new UI. It's not available as of yet. When using CircleCI API to trigger one pipeline from another pipeline, is there some way to propagate the identity of the initiator to the first pipeline that triggered, or sorry, from the first pipeline to the triggered pipeline? We're currently using a hard code circle token, but that makes the secondary pipeline look as if it was initiated by the owner of the token. Um, that is exactly how it's intended to work. Um, the best way I can think, um, you can't set the owner. We normally pull that information out of the um, web, webhook we receive from the VCS provider. In the instance that you're using API, we assume that the token owner is the person triggering the build, um, since it would be a personal API token. So in this case, if someone is triggering the build who is not the token owner, I would say maybe create a parameter where they can pass that token in um, and use their own token. What kind of cleanup is applied to DLC? I suppose it cannot grow indefinitely should my jobs actively try to remove unused layers and images. Um, it's not always necessary to clean up. Um, a DLC uh, layer will only be available for 14 days. Um, so they automatically get cleaned up. If you run into an instance where you're getting stale caches from DLC though, you can definitely run a uh, DLC cleanup command. Um, and that's available in our knowledge base um, if you search uh, stale DLC layers or stale Docker layer caching layers. My company is grandfathered into the old pricing model. Are there plans to move everyone to the new pricing model? If so, when? Um, there are not any plans that I know of. If you are on the old pricing model, you will remain there until you choose to upgrade. Although there are tons of benefits involved in an upgrade, um, I would encourage you to look into those and maybe um, you would see the value. Are there any plans to release an app? Specifically, we would love to download .apk artifacts through an app because installing from a web link on Android requires you allow any APK downloaded by Chrome, which is less than ideal. Um, at this time, we have no plans of releasing an app, but that could change in the future. Uh, the best method to do that right now is to log into CircleCI on your mobile device and download via Chrome. Where can I find how many builds were triggered in the last month for a given repository? Um, this information should be available via the API. And if it's not, it will be available via the Insights API, which is uh, due for release uh, here soon. Um, I cannot give you an example off the top of my head right now, but within our API documentation, if you run a GET request against the project you want information on, you can um, receive details about the project running. I believe that will solve that question. Is there any way to make a workspace persist longer than 15 days? What's your solution to persist build specific data for long periods of time? Um, workspaces are only intended to be used inside um, a single workflow. So workspace data uh, being persisted for 15 days is for job reruns. So if you're rerunning a job and you need build specific data for longer periods of time, I would recommend storing that data as an artifact rather than um, using workspaces.
is there a way to queue a workflow if another workflow is already running? Um, this depends on your plan. In the free and open source instance, if you are trying to queue a workflow after another workflow, um, you have four containers, so it's possible if you're utilizing all four containers to force a workflow to queue behind that. If you're on performance plan, um, then you have access to a lot more containers, which would mean that instead of the workflow queuing behind an already running workflow, it would run at the same time. Um, if you do need to restrict that and are on the performance plan, contact support. And that is support at circleci.com. Are there plans to implement user input build parameters? There are several posts about this in the forum already. Um, using the API, um, in the V2 API, you can um, submit pipeline parameters, which, um, which will allow you to provide whatever parameters you need to as you trigger the build, and those, very, those values will be available within the build. Are there any plans to add new roles to CircleCI to view billing minutes, et cetera, instead of having to be GitHub admins? Um, currently, we replicate all permission information from the VCS provider, whether that be Bitbucket or GitHub. Um, so right now, you would need to be an admin to access that information. I am not sure of any plans to change that right now, but it could be changing in the future. We use the CircleCI Golang image. Am I correct that we need to download and install things like MySQL and PostgreSQL every time our pipeline runs, or is there another way? Um, there is another way. You can use service containers. So for um, Postgres and MySQL, we have service containers available that you can spin up uh, the same time your build's running. Um, and that'll prevent you from having to download and install it each time you run the build. If you need help getting that set up, please reach out to your support. We'd be happy to get you going. Or um, on our docs, there is some more information on running service containers. The permission for creating and versioning orbs are all tied to GitHub admins, but I want to be able to author orbs without needing to go through a GitHub admin. What do you suggest there? Um, as far as I know, orbs are, to create an orb, you would need to be an admin um, because of namespace ownership. To publish different versions, you should only need write access to the repository. Um, if you write in support, I would be happy to look more into that for you. All right, we have about 10 minutes left roughly. Um, if there are any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Give it a couple more minutes. Um, and again, if uh, we aren't able to answer your questions today, we'll reach out to you via email, the address you signed up for. Um, I am not skipping questions because I don't want to answer them. Some of them are a little more specific and would require some more information. Um, so we would be able to better engage you 
um, on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, and if you don't receive an email, please reach out to support at circleci.com. We'd be more than happy to help you out. Our company has to hold running end-to-end -end tests on macOS executors. Due to macOS executor lacking Docker, please if you can show us how I can install Docker, and use Docker commands like Docker run inside a macOS executor. I want to say that Docker should be available in macOS by default. Um, however, um, I'm not entirely confident in that. If it's not, you should be able to reach out to support, we'll help you out. I, I believe Mac, o, Mac OS contains the Docker environment that you'd be able to run it on. How do you set the executor size and the YAML configs? Uh, the executor size is defined by the resource class uh, configuration key. Um, that's available in our config reference on the CircleCI docs. Can we use the Docker file in a project rather than a Docker file published somewhere? I might need to know more about this question, but yeah, you can import the Docker file and build it within the application. Um, but when building Docker, you would either need to use uh, set up remote Docker or the machine executor to have access to the privileged Docker commands. How can we stop deployments for multiple commits on the same branch from running at the same time? There is a feature called auto cancel redundant builds available in the project settings. Any, um, so if you trigger build A and build B, but you um, build A was, uh, you realized a mistake, so you fix that and you started running build B, you don't want build A to run anymore. Auto cancel redundant builds would automatically cancel build A to prevent it from deploying and then only build B would deploy from that point. Um, if auto cancel redundant builds doesn't work for you, I would suggest using the approval job step. Um, can you please tell us the charging fee to run Mac OS Executor? Try checking on the Circle CI pricing, but I couldn't find it there. We are... The, uh, the credit per minute value is on the pricing page. Um, if you believe you are being charged incorrectly for using the Mac OS Executor, please reach out to billing at circleci.com. We'd be happy to help you with that. I don't know the, uh, the credit price off the top of my head though, sorry. We use a nightly scheduler to run a workflow daily. Is there an easy way to trigger that workflow on demand when needed? Um, you could use the API to trigger that workflow as needed um, using the new V2 pipelines API. Um, that, that would give you an on-demand method to trigger the build.
are workflows and pipelines the same thing? Um, yeah, essentially they're the same thing. Um, the real difference kind of comes into the API. The pipelines API um, allows you to send like build parameters and uh, a lot, it'll allow you to provide more data into your pipeline or workflow. Um, essentially, they're very similar and almost the same thing. Is restricting approvals to certain users available when using Bitbucket? Great question. Um, and the answer is unfortunately no, and that's due to the way that Bitbucket handles its permissions um, API. As we try to grab um, user permissions from Bitbucket, it doesn't provide us with a lot of information. So we're unable to make that determination of uh, whether to allow or not allow a user to execute an approval or sorry, for to be added to a context to uh, restrict in approval. Um, yeah. Can user deployment keys be used in workspaces without rerunning checkout? In workspaces. I'm not sure what you're asking there. Um, if you could clarify. Um, for the most part, what I think you're adding is, or asking is how can you um, only check out one time in um, downstream jobs? Um, and you can use Workspace. Use Workspace to persist uh, your repository and that will, that will allow you to not check out in subsequent jobs. Um, as for the user deployment key part, I'm not sure what you're asking there. Is there a way to run a specific job, say end to end in a pipeline, one at a time, even though it is triggered at the same time, different branches of the pipeline? Um, while on performance plan, you have access to 200 containers. It's not possible to say this job should queue behind another. They will, they will run at the same time. Um, there is a way for us to restrict that. I would ask you to reach out to support at circlesci.com. We'd uh, be happy to help you with that. Okay, it, we have about two minutes until the end. I have time for about one more question. Um, if anyone has any last minute thoughts, I see a lot of you are starting to drop off the call. Uh, meant to say user specific SSH key and the uh, can the user deployment keys be used in workspace without rerunning checkout? Um, can you reach out to support at circleci.com? Um, we're a little out of time here and um, I think I'm able to provide you with the solution. I would just need a little more information. Um, that being said, I appreciate everyone who's joined and asked questions. It's been a lot of fun answering them all. Um, if I wasn't able to get to your question because it was a little too specific, please reach out to support at circleci.com or we'll follow up with you via email in the next 24 hours. Um, I'm going to end the webinar here. Everyone have a great rest of your week.